All right, I got a chance today between uh, thunderstorms and rain showers to do a little bit of a test. A lot of people were interested in what does this modification do for the 1025 or the 1 Series with, with the 1 Series pump on it. I know this thread that a lot of people have been following along were really, we started thinking about, well, what if we just added the 2025 hour pump? And I did that uh, on my tractor and did get some increase in performance, but um, wasn't quite enough. Uh, so, you know, that took me down this path of trying to figure out, well, how can you send more fluid to the implements? Um, because I didn't think the steering needed that much. Didn't make sense to me. This is me showing you the steering, you know, works just as it did uh, in the stock setup. But it's hard for me to understand why such a small steering cylinder really needed uh, that much capacity. And I think at the end of the day, what it boils down to is most of the flow dividers that are created out there really just split 50-50. Some do 66-33 and they probably have some 75-25, but I've seen a bunch. I've looked everywhere trying to find how to solve this problem and most are 50-50 and I think that makes sense for most applications. But here I think we're, we're missing some performance by sending so much through that steering circuit. So this is at idle, um, both set at about 1600 RPMs. And as you can see, uh, you're already seeing an increase in performance. What I actually expected initially uh, was the possibility that the performance would be lower at idle or even at lower RPMs, maybe somewhere around 2000. Um, that's not what I'm seeing here. So that's good. Um, you know, what I was really hoping for was at least the same performance and we got that. So. Um, you know, it's outrunning the stock configuration. Um, you know, maybe maybe one fifth faster, it's hard to say. Um, and I know that I'm testing loaders here. Um, loaders are probably less important than the backhoe, but I think a lo the loader is definitely important. I'm raising the RPMs up to 2,000 uh, on both machines. So I'll do, I'm doing 1,600, 2,000, 2,500, and then wide open throttle, which is around 3,300. So, um, yeah, changing that up and going for the next test. Like I said, I have these two tractors here uh, where I can do this test, this real world test to show you. you know, I can show you numbers all day, but if I tell you something's 8% faster or 15% faster, it's hard to tell for sure. Like, what does that really mean? Um, so 2000 RPMs, you start to see actually a pretty significant increase in performance. Um, you know, not, not quite a third faster, um, uh, but maybe almost, um, so in, in, in the seat, this feels a lot different. It wakes the tractor up. Um, you, you're, you're going to notice that, uh, significantly. And, you know, 2000 RPMs is where I like to run somewhere between 2000 and 2500 RPMs. Usually if I'm doing a lot of loader work. I'll keep it up closer to 2500. I just don't like it being that loud. So I like to keep the RPMs probably 2200-ish. This is a jump up to 2500. Now this is really where it wakes up, I would say. Um, as you'll see here, it's probably probably somewhere in the order of a third faster. Um, and this, again, if, if you only have the loader, um, you're going to be very happy with this. Um, if you have the backhoe, you'll definitely be very happy with this, but I think the thing that makes me want more, more flow even is, is the backhoe specifically. Um, you know, if you've ever run a mini excavator, um, you know, you're doing three functions at once is kind of a, uh, something you take for granted. Um, but with this one, uh, with this particular backhoe and stock configuration, one function is about all you can pull. This is wide open throttle. I mean, that's almost half as, I mean, twice as fast. I mean very significant increase. I would never run, um, you know, we, you'd never do this in the real world, right? Grab a scoop of something and slam it all the way up to the top. You'd have it all over your hood. But, um, you know, for this test to kind of show you um, the difference in performance, I thought that this made sense. Um, the testing I've done on the backhoe, and again, I can't give you a side-by-side -side comparison like this, but um, you can run three functions at once with the stock pump. Uh, at higher RPMs, really start to be able to run three functions at 2,500 RPMs. 
wide open throttle, you can definitely run three functions at once. 2,500 RPMs, two functions at once is no problem at all. Uh, certainly not at wide open throttle. But, uh, oh, I'm too fat to get between the tractors, so I've got to hop over here. Uh, try to get these tractors close together so I can reach both and do a do a test where I can actually, you know, actuate the levers uh, at the exact same time. So I'll pull you around here to the back. If On the right-hand side, if you look at the back of your tractor, it's what it should look like generally. There's a feed tube that comes off the hydraulic pump that runs underneath the seat. It doesn't have a seat, but relocated that to run the uh, feed tube back across. And that's a good concern, but actually the devices for the flow division, the new flow division, uh, they tuck really nice and tight on the frame uh, behind uh, the left side wheel. And that uh, spot not only is a nice tight spot to put it, um, but uh, if you have any experience with hydraulics or hydraulic components, they're built, they're not built for weight saving. So uh, it's a very hardy piece of equipment down there. Everything that I've put on so far has been hydraulic tubes that are above the spec that's actually on it. The uh, wing pressure is 3300. Uh, that means the burst reports that. So um, if you want to see more videos like this, definitely subscribe. I uh, hope this answers questions. If you have other questions, let me know uh, and certainly comment below. Um, love to address anything that you're thinking about. Thanks for watching.